Hi friends, today we have a really inspiring garden tour. Stacy Ling, who is the owner of Bricks and Blooms, has offered to give us a tour of her garden that she built on top of a basketball court. Now, many of you know that I'm a big fan of Frances Palmer, and Frances Palmer built her dahlia patch on top of a tennis court. So when I saw that Stacy had built a garden on top of a basketball court, I thought I have to reach out to her and see if she would share a garden tour with us and explain how she created this gorgeous potager garden right there on top of cement. I was completely blown away. And wouldn't you know that after talking to Stacy, I learned that she has a book coming out on gardening next year. So let's first get a tour of her amazing garden and then I'll tell you about her upcoming book at the end of this video. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Stacy. I'm from Bricks and Blooms. You can find me on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and my blog, stacyling.com. Thanks to Danielle for bringing me on today where I can take you guys around the gardens. I live in New Jersey and I garden in zone 6A in the rolling hills of Somerset County. It is beautiful here right now. We are in like at 65, 70 degree temps. The plants are doing great, the gardens look amazing, and I have a few favorite, we have a lot of gardens here actually, but I wanna take you through a few of them just to kind of show you what's blooming, um, how I'm starting to decorate for fall, and some of my favorite fall garden flowers. Welcome to the Potager Garden. This garden has been a work in progress. It was formerly being used as a basketball court. I. I completely see it another way. It houses my vegetable garden, it, it houses my uh, flower garden, and uh, it's also an outdoor dining space. We do intend to add uh, an outdoor kitchen, hopefully next year, so that it can truly be like a farm to table type space. But for now, I love it, and I've got the table already set for a dinner party. So some of the plants in here are kind of on their way out as we're heading into fall. Like a lot of my tomatoes are pretty much done. I mean, they're still producing a little bit, but they don't, you know, they don't look so healthy anymore. Uh, but I still have lots of flowers going and I'm out here every day cutting, watering, and just kind of taking care of things. I love coming out here and just soaking up the scene. It's really beautiful. And let me show you what's blooming today. So I found this bicycle at the flea market in Vermont. We have a cabin up there and there's this amazing outdoor flea market that we go to and the holiday weekends are spectacular. Well, this past Labor Day weekend, I found this bike for $50. I had to have it. I love it. Look at the color. It looks so pretty out here. And that pink basket just really got me. I knew it would look amazing and uh, it was a great find. So outside this bed, we've got a hydrangea paniculata and I've got a couple of uh, zinnias out here, a couple different varieties. Some are blooming, some are kind of wrapping it up. Just to kind of give you a little background, the basketball hoop used to be over there and we took that down, obviously. We added, we recently added these string lights, they're solar lights. It's great because we don't even, you, you don't have to plug them in and they just automatically go on as it gets dark. These raised beds are totally new. My husband built them this spring with his buddy. I challenged them to get it done in March and they exceeded my expectations with these amazing beds. They're about 21 inches high and some of them are about 15 feet long, I wanna say. I don't know, I'd have to look at the original plans, but they're pretty large, they're pretty deep. And I really wanted to be able to grow a lot of deep-rooted vegetables. I wanted the beds to be raised up pretty high. And I wanted this little seat on there so that I could sit and weed and just like work in the gardens. As you can imagine, it was a lot to fill. So we actually used leaf mold from the property off in the woods and that we have like a huge leaf pile back there and that helped really fill the beds and then i added like compost and some good raised garden bed soil and that really made a difference so just to sort of give you a little view of what's happening in here i've got a small dinner party 
theme is Halloween. I'll show you some details of the table in a bit, but I just want to generally talk about the garden. So on this side of the garden, I've got my herbs and tomatoes and vegetables. I've got like a ton of habaneros in there if anyone wants any. <laughs> I, I can't even give them away. My husband likes them, but look at how many are there. I mean, I, I have a lot to pick. I've got some herbs in the ground along here some zinnias. I'm a huge fan of growing zinnias. They're easy to grow, easy to care for. I start them from seed every year. This year, my favorite, I usually pick a favorite. One year, it was Benary's Giant Wine. Last year, it was Senorita Zinnia. This year, it is Queen Lime with Blush. I love that flower. It's beautiful. It was really fun to grow. I've got some beautiful cosmos growing here that I started from seed. And as you can see, some of the zinnias, you know, they just have that end of season powdery mildew. And I just leave it alone and let the plant continue blooming. I need to come out here and deadhead and, you know, hope I still get some good flowers for at least another few weeks before I wind up removing the plants. So here is my table that is all set for a dinner party. The theme is uh, we do I do a monthly dinner group and our theme is a Halloween dinner party and so this is my take on it. I made a cut flower arrangement for my centerpiece and I cut some ivy from the property and added it to the table as a pretty table runner and I brought my vintage candlesticks out and I've got some vintage amber glasses and I just really focused on black gold and then I added the drama with my flowers. So when we moved here, the arbor was completely falling apart and we were like not really sure what we wanted to do about it. We were thinking about getting a fence company in to kind of, you know, re like to fix it for us and we were really trying to come up with different ways to deal with it. Well, you know what we wound up doing? I bought an arbor from Gardener Supply, matched the green paint to the fence, and here we go. It had a honeysuckle vine. There's one on each side of the arbor, and it was pretty aggressively growing on it. So we had to kind of do a little bit of surgery on it, remove it, and kind of slide this other arbor in that I painted. It took me a long time to paint it because it's got all those little slats on the side, but totally worth it because look at how good it looks. For fall, I added these corn stalks. I just thought that was like a nice little touch. I love adding the sugar pumpkins to my fencing. I just think that really adds a little bit to the gardens for fall without having to do a whole lot. So I had some borage in this garden and it was like completely done. So I pulled it out and I think I'm gonna be planting this celosia here. It's so beautiful. I just, it just really struck me at the nursery yesterday. I love the color. I love the texture. I really love celosia for fall. And if I'm buying fall plants, to be honest with you, I would rather get celosia or like Sedum Autumn Joy, pansies, asters, anything else than mums. I'm, I like, I love garden mums. They're really fun. Uh, I do still use them in my gardens, but if I just prefer these other plants that I can just get a lot more bang for my buck out of them. And Celosia is definitely one of those plants. I mean, in my zone, it'll, it'll drop seed and regrow again next year. So it, it almost, even though it's an annual, it almost acts like a perennial for that very reason. And I, and I really love it. It's just so beautiful. I've got some straw flowers and zinnias that have seen better days. They're pretty much done, really. Even the blooms don't look good anymore, so I'm gonna have to pull them. So since this garden used to be a basketball court, we needed some beds. So my husband and his friend built these beautiful raised garden beds. They're all different shapes uh, because we, we designed it so that we can put a fountain in the middle. And I love the fountain. This is also new to the garden. I just bought it this year and it's, it's amazing. I found it locally at a local like they sell statues and garden decor and stuff like that and it's just it's been so wonderful having it out here it was 
such a great addition to this garden. So although things are starting to kind of die back, it's fall, my snapdragons are starting to spruce up now that it's cooling down. We had like a little hot spell and they didn't love it, but they're starting to perk up again. I have some calendula in here. And the one thing that I want to mention about calendula is it's a great companion plant. I don't know if you can see the aphids on those, but they have been trapping the aphids for me and the aphids have not touched anything else in this garden except that calendula. So it's been a real smart move having them in here because I have not had a problem with aphids aside from the calendula. And I actually have calendula planted in other areas of the garden that don't have aphids on them, but just for whatever reason, they liked them in this side of the bed and at least they're not on all the rest of my plants. But I have one full bed of dahlias. Now, these dahlias I planted way early for my growing zone. I planted them in April, which really I should have waited until May, but we had such a mild winter it didn't look like we were getting a frost and I was gonna watch the weather like a hawk. So I'm really glad I did because it paid off. We never got a frost and I was prepared to cover them if I had to. And they just did beautiful all season long. I mean, I think they started blooming in like early July. So I've had a really, really long season with them. So the dahlias that I'm growing in here, I've got labyrinth, florel, my favorite this year is Dahlia Kogain Fubuki. Ooh, is that a beauty? She starts as a creamy yellow and then she uh, deepens to like a pink and then she gets to a really beautiful pink and it's really, if you've never grown it before, try to find it. It's a great Dahlia, my favorite this year for sure. I've also got Penhill Watermelon, um, Thomas Edison. I have Cafe Olaid, although she is taking her time blooming this year. Uh, so far I had one bloom and I cut it already, so uh, I do see some more buds on the plant, but she has been a little bit of a diva. So around the perimeter of this garden, I had planted, I mean, I have a bunch of perennials and some vegetables in the garden, but I had planted sweet peas around. They're done, so you won't see them anymore. But I had also included some sunflowers and they all got eaten. This year they all got eaten. Last year I had a huge display of sunflowers, but not this year. And I have one remaining, that's it. So that is my one sunflower that I planted that made it this year. It bloomed beautifully and you know, now it's done. I, I do need to harvest the seeds still so that I can replant them for next year. So this garden is what I call the front porch garden because it sits obviously off the front porch and it's just easy to identify. So when I'm explaining it to people, they know which garden I'm talking about. This is one of the cottage gardens here and I absolutely love it this time of year. Oh, it's beautiful. It's got beautiful views of the valley and in fall you can really see like the trees change color and it's just gorgeous. But can we just stand back and admire the Rudbeckia for a minute because Wow, is she a stunner. I was so surprised at how much was here and I love it. I love every single bloom in this garden. It makes me so happy every time I come outside and walk by it. And it's just such a cheerful display when you enter my home. We do have a hosta here. I did not plant it, so I do not know the variety, unfortunately. And it is starting to die back right now. This is Gomfrina Truffula Pink by Proven Winners. I've got it in a pot right now and it's still doing amazing. And I definitely want to plant my, like all of my gardens with it next year. I love how it performed. I love how it did. It looked great here, did well with my zone. And I definitely need more Gomfrina in my life. Another one of my favorites is Sedum Autumn Joy. I, this is a plant that I will recommend over and over and over, especially if you're new to gardening. It is easy to grow, easy to care for, and just looks good all year round. And yes, it's a perennial, so you're probably wondering, well, how does it look good in winter? Well, if you leave the seed heads, especially when snow sits on it, it's really very beautiful. But I have to tell you, I also use those, those same dried seed heads 
in my winter flower arrangements. So you can really get a lot out of these plants and you just cannot beat the texture that you get from it in your garden. So we're doing a little lawn repair here, so please ignore. <laughs> but can we just appreciate the view? I mean, it's spectacular. I love, we have a beautiful garden down there by the driveway. I've got some hardy hibiscus down there and I've got some pumpkins growing and some sedum autumn joy. That bed actually has like thousands and I definitely wanna say thousands of daffodils and it's just beautiful in spring. Um, that was a really lovely surprise when we moved here to find so many daffodils. I had no idea they were there. But anyway, this garden is filled with super tunias. I've got bubblegum pink and Bordeaux. I've got lantana and a bunch of celosia that receded from prior years. So I just kind of let them be and enjoy them. I've got an allium here that also self-seeded. I don't know the variety. It was here before we moved in, but it's really beautiful. I'll show you a little bit more when we get over to the porch. Some black-eyed Susan seeded themselves over here. Some celosia, again, just a volunteer. I planted all of the zinnias along there. I started them from seed indoors in my sunroom this winter. And there's a couple other perennials in there. That, have, that are just kind of done for the season. I love this garden. And as all the foliage changes, you just really, it just picks up the hues of fall. It's, it's, it's really breathtaking. So I'm gonna pan over to this side of the walkway, just so you can see, I've got more Black Eyed Susans. I attached some corn stalks to my porch. I love how that looks. Let's kind of walk by the porch so you can get a better view of what's going on. So I've got, again, th those alliums. I've got zinnias. I believe I've got uproar, uproar rose and senorita zinnias over here. I do need to swap out my plants in my containers. So that's like next on my fall gardening list. I just didn't get to it yet. But I've still got some Gonfrina, Lantana, Sedum Autumn Joy. Again, some more zinnias. This one's Uproar. This one's a volunteer sunflower. I did not plant it. I'm not even sure what variety it is. I don't know where it came from, <laughs> but I'm happy it's here. It was really fun. Uh, it's, it's, it's almost done and I'm gonna try to harvest some of the seeds, whatever's left, because it was really fun to grow. I would like to intentionally place it somewhere next year. Hanging in the baskets, I've got some angelonia. They've probably seen better days, but it's still going, and I love how it looks with the corn stalk, so I'm gonna keep it going for as long as I can. So I've got this beautiful birdhouse from Good Directions, and I do have birds that reside in there. They actually just left for the season, so I finally was able to move it <laughs> to, my, to my gardens, and that is the front porch. And that's it, you guys. Thanks so much for joining me in the garden today. It was so great spending time with you. Thanks again to Danielle for having me on. Enjoy a beautiful day. Thank you so much, Stacy, for sharing your absolutely gorgeous gardens with us. Wasn't that inspiring? Let me know what your favorite part of Stacy's garden was. I love how she really created an entire garden room out of that old basketball court. She made it almost a living and dining room and adding in that fountain was just so beautiful. I think she has really that wonderful artistic touch when it comes to garden design. But now let me tell you about Stacy's new and upcoming book. So Stacy's book comes out next year, but you can pre-order it right now on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description section below if you're interested. I'll definitely be ordering a copy. And as Stacy described the book to me, what I gathered from her is that it's really a book directed either towards beginner gardeners who want a beautiful flower garden, or it might also be for a gardener who wants a beautiful flower garden, but doesn't really have the time to dedicate hours each day to gardening. Now she explained to me that as her children were growing up, and my daughter is a teenager right now, so I can totally understand that balancing act of being a mom and also wanting to be in the garden all the time. But really basically, if you have time constraints, this book is going to give you an easy, quick, but successful approach to having a beautiful 
flower garden. And like I say, I'll put a link to it in the description section below if you're interested in giving it a read. I think we definitely need to add it into our floral library coming soon. Well, friends, I want to wish you a wonderful day. Thanks again so much to Stacy for her generosity and all the time she spent filming that tour for us. Please give this video a thumbs up so that this video is showed to more people on YouTube and we can really get Stacy a lot of exposure and a lot of help selling her book. Well, I want to wish you a wonderful day and I'll see you sometime soon. Bye.